Hello, St. Bernard's family. I'm Ashley Givens. I'm a volunteer with the pastoral care department, and I'm also a pastor at a local church that happens to meet right here next to the St. Bernard's campus. And so I see a lot of the activity that goes on around this medical center. Um, it is always hopping over here. And it's been such a joy for me over the last couple of months to be inside and be a little closer to the action, to see all of you at work. Um, it's probably routine to you by now, but I'm gonna tell you as someone that's an outsider, it's miraculous, the things that happen here. So if you meet me in the hall and you see me sort of standing there awestruck, uh, looking around at the amazing things that are happening, will just be understanding with me and know that it's not routine for me yet. And I also hope that you'll introduce yourself to me if we happen to cross paths in the hallway. When I was driving up Matthews this last week to come work at my church building for a little while, I noticed the entrance at one main that reads, Heroes Walk Through These Doors. I'm pretty sure that that was debuted during the roughest days of the COVID pandemic, but it's no less true now. Every single day, you are bringing the very best of your knowledge, skills, training, experience, compassion, and natural gifting to make this a place of healing. And every single day, patients and their loved ones are showing up with tremendous acts of bravery, perseverance, and hope, even in the face of profound suffering. And that is all pretty heroic stuff for sure. But I'm going to tell you a little secret. I have been entertaining the idea of taking just a little post-it note to stick on that same entrance that just reads humans. Humans walk through these doors. A hospital is a place where our humanity is on full display and there is no way to get around it. At any given moment in this medical center, a human is taking her very first breath as another is taking his very last breath. And in between those two breaths, the whole gamut of the human experience is represented in this ordinary building in the middle of a very ordinary little city on an ordinary Thursday. And some days that reality might leave us feeling awestruck, kind of like me standing in the middle of a hallway. It's an amazing thing to ponder. But then on other days, that reality can leave us feeling overwhelmed because to be in a place with so many humans doing human -y things means that we are constantly confronted with just how vulnerable and limited we human beings are. We catch viruses and we develop infections. Our joints wear out, bones break, hearts and kidneys and livers get diseased. Even with the most cutting edge medicine and technology and the best luck and the most primo genetic pool you could ever hope for, these bodies do not last forever. We're just human, even though sometimes we might act like heroes. Even though it might be our job description to act like heroes. Some days our back is killing us. The baby kept us up half the night. We had a fight with our spouse or a teenager on the way out the door. We have a bill we're not sure how to pay or a really big decision we don't know how to make. We're worried about our kid our aging parent, our 401k. We keep replaying that stupid mistake we made yesterday. We need to be two places at the same time to get it all done. And we realize that no amount of education or on the job training or expertise can really prepare us for what it means to be a human, trying to work with a bunch of other humans to take care of humans. <laughs> It is too much and not enough all at the same time. The Apostle Paul captures this paradox of living life where we're asked to be heroes in the middle of our humanity with a really beautiful image. If you know much about the life of the Apostle Paul, if you've read the book of Acts, you know that the early church is kind of a glorious mess. There are these amazing, miraculous things happening at the same time that really mundane tasks have to take place. 
All of these early Christians have to learn how to get along with people from different backgrounds. They have to learn how to make decisions together, how to spend money. And so lots of the letters that we read in the New Testament, many of which the Apostle Paul wrote, have the combination of these amazing theological ideas along with instructions about how to like settle arguments that you're having with your sister-in-law. And in the middle of one of these letters, 2 Corinthians, which that church was really just a tumultuous mess, in the middle of a very difficult time to be a Christian, Paul uses this image to try to explain what it's like to be caught up in a life of living on mission with God and for God in the midst of our humanity. This is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. He says, We have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying around in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be visible in our bodies. When you and I hear these words, we can probably conjure up a mental image of a clay jar, or some translations use the words earthen vessel. We've seen a picture, or we might have bought bought a vintage looking pitcher at Hobby Lobby or something like that. But the Corinthian Christians would have heard these words read out loud and they could have looked around the room right then and there and seen several clay jars. These were just ordinary utilitarian items that a person would use multiple times a day and not ever really stop to look at. They were nothing special or precious, nothing to take extra special note of. They were certainly not a place that you would store a treasure. And yet Paul says, this is exactly what God chooses to do. These very ordinary bodies that we have, bodies that are vulnerable to disease, bodies that wear out and get tired, bodies that need to sleep, bodies that are limited, bodies that bleed and get hungry, bodies that will ultimately return to the dust. These bodies become the vehicle for the self-giving love of Jesus and the miraculous new life of Jesus at work in us. One of my favorite theologians, Henry Nouwen, puts it this way. He says, the mystery of ministry is that we have been chosen to make our own limited and very conditional love the gateway for the unlimited and unconditional love of God. I think it would be safe for us to expand that word love just a little bit to include all of the places where we most keenly feel our own human limits and conditions, our limited compassion, resources, knowledge, ability, power, patience, strength, perseverance, goodness, All of these things, while they might be a frustration for us and even a place of shame sometimes, they become a gateway for others to come in contact with the unlimited, unconditional love, compassion, resources, knowledge, ability, power, patience, strength, faithfulness, and goodness of God. We live in a society that always promises that we can be better, do more. We could be more efficient. We could get one more degree. We could push ourselves, stretch ourselves, envision more. Every mistake, every shortcoming is an opportunity for improvement. That's some good corporate speak. But God looks at us and he says, your limits are sacred. They are the tool that I have chosen to make my unlimited love, my unconditional love known in the world. Offer your limits to me and let me use them. Come live in the mystery of being a clay jar that is full of treasure. 
My prayer for you this week, St. Bernard's family, is that no matter your role here in this medical center, that when you bump up against the limits of your humanity this week, and you will, you will do that. That's just part of being human. That that won't be an opportunity of shame, that that won't be a moment that you feel like you have to hang your head or tuck your tail, that you have to beat yourself up, but that you would take just a moment, take a deep breath, you would look down at your feet, and you would realize that in those moments of your own limitation, that you are standing right in the middle of the mystery of ministry, that your own limits are a place where God's unlimited love is made known. I'm going to pray for you. Oh God, we are so grateful that you have chosen us to be part of your mission in the world. We are grateful that these clay jars we live in, these earthen vessels of our bodies that we often find frustratingly limited. God, that you see them as holy and sacred and good, and you choose to use them in ways that we could never use them on our own power. Make us aware every day of the treasure that we carry in these clay jars. And let us offer our limits to you to be used as a gateway for your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Be blessed. Have a great week.